So next we're gonna work on taking the upper part out and there are two screws at the bottom. Uh, I believe they are Torx screws. I wanna say T25, but uh, somebody will have to double check that for me. And uh, you're going to pretty much just simply remove them. They are a little bit different than your average screw. Um, they kind of have like a little bit of tension to them. So I've got a ratcheting screwdriver here, which made it really easy. Um, you should have no issues with a regular screwdriver as well, but uh, not having to kind of move the whole thing around it makes it a little bit easier. And also it will help when you go to tighten it. Once you get those two screws, you can kind of close the top and uh, you'll shimmy the whole uh, upper unit upwards kind of out of its place and then we'll have to unplug some of the plugs in the back to fully remove it. So kind of be careful when you remove it here, but you'll be able to identify the plugs a little more easier uh, it, when you're actually doing it. You can also lift the unit upwards uh, the other way around to get uh, some clearance. Keep in mind uh, the there are dials on the right side they are covered in grease, so just uh, be careful, I guess, with that because you don't want to, one, remove too much grease uh, so it's not as smooth, and also you get very dirty and you can get other things very dirty. But anyways, there are a few plugs back here. You can see here there are by the uh, white clips and a silver one. Now, this silver metal one is pretty difficult, and then there's a third one as well. One trick I had for the silver one is it can take a lot of force. It looks like it's kind of built to to be put on very forcefully. So what you'll have to do is take a flathead screwdriver and kind of wedge it vertically in between the diagonal section as it sits right now and the upper part of the unit. And then you'll simply kind of pull upwards opposite so the direction of the plug goes downwards and uh, will remove. Uh, you Trying to do it with bare fingers is a little difficult just because uh, you can really end up uh, scratching your hand or you know getting, getting injured, I guess, because it's on there pretty tight. So keep that in mind when you are removing this plug. Once you get that, now we're going to remove the lower portion. So there are two screws similar to the upper two that we removed. However, they're different in length. So you want to keep these separate or identified from the upper ones that you removed so that you don't switch them around when you go back to reinstall. Um, or you just at least want to acknowledge the differences so that when you do put it together, you'll put the right ones in the correct place. Once you get those two screws out, there are some little tabs in the back um, behind those loops that you kind of pull upwards. There are little, little black tabs. And I'll see if I can kind of zoom in here. As you can see, right behind that silver loop, there are those little black tabs, and you'll just take a flathead and pry upwards as much as you can. Um, they only go up to a point, so don't like keep pulling because you will probably break it. Um, but they're like a little extra locking mechanism to hold the CD player in place. 
So we're going to pull those up and we will then kind of work on loosening the unit here and there and we will pull the lower portion out. So when you do pull it out, you'll have to pull kind of in an upwards motion. It does have some like round uh, cylindrical brackets on the sides. So there is kind of a specific pattern you have to follow to actually pull the unit out. It's kind of like up and out and up. You'll kind of get the hang of it. You might need to shimmy it around a little bit to, to figure it out, but you'll eventually see uh, how it pulls out and uh, how you can put it back in as well. Once we get this out, then we'll have to unplug pretty much everything from the back. So there is an assortment of plugs, a silver one similar to uh, the upper part that we pulled out, two colored ones, a big clipped one, and also one on the side. Depending on what options you have, maybe this might differ a little bit, but more or less, uh, you're going to unplug everything to say the least. So. Keep in mind, be careful of the clips when you're pulling them, try not to break anything, and use proper leverage when removing them. One thing I want to note is when you do, before you do pull this out as a warning, um, make sure to place a microfiber cloth on your gear shift knob uh, so that you don't scratch anything. Now what we're going to have to do is have an access point where we can wire the USB uh, cables and GPS and stuff uh, to the glove box more or less. And so there's this portion lower uh, to the uh, passenger wheel well side or passenger well side I should say uh, and it is one screw I believe and you can kind of pull the plastic out and it won't come out all the way but just enough to uh, pretty much create enough space for you to be able to uh, put your wires through. So you're going to pretty much pull your USB cables and other wires through the unit. You can use a guide wire as I've got this little white uh, stiffer cable here. Pretty much tie the uh, stiffer cable around the looser cable and then you can pull. Just make sure nothing gets stuck. You don't want to rip the head of a cable off, but this is the aux cable in particular. And uh, then we are going to pretty much plug in the aux into one of these uh, in outputs or inputs rather
So every plug kind of has its own uh, design, so it can only more or less go in one place. So that's what we're going to quickly put together here. It's a lot easier than it looks. Once you get the cables all connected, you want to tuck them in away from any interference. And we do have kind of a very large uh, group of cables that we're going to have to set behind. Once all the cables are connected, you can then slide everything back. You will have to kind of stuff the harnesses towards the back to make everything fit. Uh, it looks like it was the same kind of deal with the uh, widescreen ones. It's a really tight fit, so you got to work really hard at it. Uh, it is kind of a pain in the butt, but eventually if you shimmy it uh, into the right place, uh, it'll all fit back together perfectly. and then you have the unit basically set up. You can do a little test run here before you put everything together. You can see I've got the GPS here. Uh, this is the main menu. You have Bluetooth. Uh, similar to my Chrysler 300, once again, you can refer to that video for extra features. You can have uh, performance tools integrated and the title of that video, I'll have a link in the description is Chrysler 300 performance pages. It works exactly the same way for this car. Um, of course, if you don't already have a backup camera, you can attach 
a backup camera to it and you can attach your existing backup camera you can attach a dash cam um, all kinds of features basically that you might not have with the original unit uh, one thing of course as I mentioned is you do lose the CD player and uh, in my case I haven't gotten the steering wheel controls to work yet at the moment but I'm still kind of playing around with it but keep that in mind that might be a possibility that in this car at least steering controls might not work um, just so you know otherwise the unit itself is really cool it's uh, really nice to have Android capability you can play movies and watch YouTube and all that stuff if you get uh, certain models so overall it does what it needs to do and it's a really cool upgrade uh, kind of modernizes your uh, W204 and without making it look out of place it looks original it looks really cool and uh, it's very useful so Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll have a link for everything in the description. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more uh, mods and stuff for the uh, Mopars and for the Mercedes. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching, guys.